Welcome back. Today, I am joined by Wukash Erkinski, and he is here from Pine 64. We're getting really excited about all that's to come over the next, well, over the course of 2019. And here to tell us all about it, Wukash, it's great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Cheers, Robbie. Can you tell us a little bit, just briefly, what makes Pine 64? I mean, I know the answer to this. I know why our community is so excited about Pine 64. But from your perspective within the company, what is different about your company? You know, I think that um, especially since we introduced the Pine book, um, we kind of have grown past, in a sense, um, past the SBC single board computer business. I mean... Mm -hmm. Single board computers are still our bread and butter. It's what we do. But uh, Tia Lim, who is the founder of uh, Pine64, clearly has a much broader vision for what Pine64 is supposed to be in time, you know? Mm -hmm. So the Pine book is clearly a step in the direction of opening up a, um, a broader spectrum of devices based on the SOCs that are used in our single board computer. Mm -hmm. And um, the Pinebook was a first step. This year, we're looking at introducing the Pine tab and subsequently the Pine phone. We have been, you know, here at Fostum, we're announcing uh, dev kits for the Pine phone. Um, it's a big step towards, you know, yet another thing in our line of, um, of devices that will be wonderful. Uh, can I, can I touch on the Pine phone just really quickly? Because yeah. I know we've, we've mentioned it here on the show before, and, and the specifications are you know, not up there with the latest and greatest Android phone. I think it's important for us to know who it's for and why it's so exciting. So for me, what is exciting about the Pine phone immediately is openness. Think about a phone where you have absolute control over the operating system. You're not locked into a service provider. You're not locked into an OS. That is so, an astonishing venture. Absolutely correctly. So the whole point of the Pine phone is to have mainline Linux running on this device. Uh, we are working hard with you know, a number of uh, projects that would be you know, UB ports, post-market OS, uh, KDE guys, uh, Plenty others. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is to create something that is not supposed to rival your, you know, daily driver, not your iPhone, not your, you know, um, Pixel or what have you. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a privacy-oriented phone running mainline Linux for those people who, uh, you know, cherish and value privacy and for those who may need it in their business, um, you know, in their organizations. Um, you know, we're introducing, well... The Pine phone is going to have features such as, you know, uh, physical switches for the camera, for the um, wow, uh, for the LTE module, for uh, for speakers. So and these are you know, actual want, toggle switches to enable and disable by hardware, not software. That's absolutely correct. Yes. So completely physical switches, which will be, you know, which are already there in the dev kits, which we're demoing here at Fostum, mm -hmm. uh, but they will find themselves um, into the actual product. I think that's really important from a, a privacy stand, standpoint for those of us who are concerned about that. Uh, and I think that's becoming more and more of a concern these days, especially in 2019, uh, because, you know, realize folks that with a hardware toggle switch to turn off your webcam, a hacker cannot re-enable it. With a software Correct. switch, a hacker can re-enable your webcam and you don't even know that it's on. Hardware, it's off, it's completely disabled from the OS and inaccessible. So that's exciting. So as, Wukash, as, um, as the Pine phone is going to be to the latest and greatest Android phone, that, that's kind of where the Pine book has landed in that it's not meant to be the most powerful laptop, it's meant to be uh, an entry level for something that's new and exciting and a completely different um, kind of grade of, I, I don't, it's never been done before from, from what I know. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely correct, Robbie. The, you know, the whole point of the Pine book was when I first wrote a post about it, you know, Pine book, what to expect you know mm -hmm. i ended the whole uh, post on the on the forum with writing you know if you expect this to replace your work or school laptop mm -hmm. don't that's that's not the point of not the, the intention yeah. at all mm -hmm. not at all 
it was meant for you know for tinkers for learning uh, Linux um, for people who just wanted to get into ARM devices and cool. wanted you know a, a package of sorts rather than having you know a separate screen and a board and all that yeah um, so uh, it never was meant to be seen as a uh, you know as a as a full fledged laptop in a sense you know it was meant for tinkers what we initially envisioned was because you know there's so much space in the chassis and there is an uh, exposed USB header inside we thought you know people would be um, hacking uh, you know mobile connectivity into it we mm -hmm. thought you know people may um, do some GPO stuff on the go with it which is possible you know uh, via um, uh, the SD card slot and, and you know these sort of things these were our you know our assumptions but people went out and did a lot of other the cool things um, with, with the pine book you know and it clearly there is clearly a market among the tinkers for this sort of device very cool and and you have shown pine 64 has shown that um, single board computing is now entering the next level. I mean, the Rock Pro 64 is an astounding board. I, it, you could use it as your set top box, and it, it's a fantastic system. Mm. So, now I just want to first of all, before we talk about what's to come from Pine 64, Ukash, I just want to thank you for choosing to be on Category 5 Technology TV this week. Um, and for those of you watching, we should understand that the information that you're about to learn is under embargo. And we're about to lift that embargo, which means this is brand new information that Wukash is about to share. So Wukash, thank you for choosing our community to release this information. Could you share with us what is next for the Pinebook? So this year we're introducing the Pinebook Pro. Um, in a sense, it is a part of a um, uh, of, of the Brock Pro 64 lineage, in mm -hmm. a sense. It features the same SOC, um, same memory, and we expect it to be uh, completely compatible with the single board computer that, is, uh, that we have rolled out mm -hmm. uh, last year. Basically, what we're doing is we're taking the uh, Rock Pro 64 as a as a s starting point, and uh, the the board is not going to be in the Pinebook Pro. It's a custom PCB which is being developed uh, for the laptop. Yeah. But uh, we um, are kind of uh, creating a continuity in a sense that those operating systems which have already come to the Pine uh, to the Rock uh, Pro 64 will make an appearance definitely down the line on the Pinebook Pro. It is much more powerful than the Pinebook. Um, has much more memory, has four gigs of RAM, and we expect that, you know, this could really be a daily driver. And it comes, really? you know, with features that, you know, there's so many people out there who these days, you know, take a, um, a Chromebook and they transform it into a, uh, a Linux laptop. Sure. And you know that's 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 fantastic, and in a sense, uh, we looked at that market and we thought, you know, what about a you know a a proper laptop, a a real laptop replacement based on you know ARM sixty four um, architecture uh, that you know that is built from the ground up with free and open source software in mind, and when uh, you know. And having features which you rarely find on high-end or um, mid-range Chromebooks, such as you know a lot Fantastic. of uh, internal storage, uh, 1080p IPS panels, you know these sort of things, as well as high quality of uh, materials for the build. I mean, we're using um, alu an aluminium alloy um, for the Pinebook Pro. You know. Wow. So, okay. This is, uh, I mean, this is uh, uh, groundbreaking. That you're you're changing the entire world of single board computing, SOC, uh, with the release of the Pinebook Pro. Um, so I think, okay, there's lots of laptops that are available. There are a lot of Chromebooks that I could convert to Linux. Uh, and so the immediate thought that comes to mind is price point. Um, we all know, of course, Pine64 is all about open platforms. And so we can expect the same from this device. Um, so without getting too much into that, just real quick, price. One hundred and ninety-nine dollars. One hundred and ninety-nine bucks. That. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, we're looking into. You know, we also heard our community people are. You know, s talking about that shipping costs a lot in the yeah. current arrangement which we have. Um, we're looking into that as well. 
uh, we hope that you know whatever we do for the Pinebook Pro is going to translate also down to the regular Pinebook. So wonderful. You know, there's more info on that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> saying we've got it all figured out. But sure, least, yeah. You know, we, we're thinking about it. With, with that in mind, uh, what kind of timeline are we looking at for the Pinebook Pro? You know, second half of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, the first prototype is here. We've got three prototypes. Uh, you know, they will go to our, you know, three prototypes going mm -hmm. to three key projects that we're working with, we're left with no prototypes at this oh, yeah. time. So, so the so projects such as um, developers of the operating systems to be able to build for the, uh, for the Pinebook Pro? That's correct, mm -hmm. yes. So we want to have, you know, at least two or three, you know, um, operating systems in place yeah. for when it rolls out. And, you know, we also going to have a scheme where developers will get their, um, you know, um, other developers other developers will get their units a bit earlier ahead of you know um, uh, users so that they can port their OS right to cool Pinebook now well. because because it's uh, because the Pinebook Pro is is generally as you mentioned a rock pro 64 at its heart it, does that mean that the transition period for those operating systems is it going to be a lot easier easier for them to develop operating systems for these uh, Pinebook Pros just because it's already available for the Rock Pro 64? So here's the thing. Um, I'm, I'm not the most technical guy out sure. there. And I don't want to pretend, you know, like I, like I know the, the answer with all certainty. What I can tell you is that from talking to, you know, the key projects um, that we work with, it, it does appear that it's a question of changing out the device tree and, you know, uh, supporting the, the features which you would expect in a laptop. So, you know, the yeah. LCD and uh, panel right. and, you know, the battery and stuff like that. But it, in principle, it appears that, you know, the porting period should be much shorter than um, in the case of a completely new SOC, you know, something that nobody has ever worked on, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, yeah. Very good, very good. Uh, okay, so beyond the Pinebook Pro, there are some other exciting things coming out of Pine64 uh, during 2019. Now, one of the things that we've been looking at here on Category 5 Technology TV is the smart home, uh, smart uh, surveillance as a good example. Uh, but one of the concerns that we have with the smart home is, you know, where is our data? How is the cloud interacting with our information and how is it being stored uh, from a privacy perspective, essentially? And, and so having control over our cloud data, having control over our surveillance and things like that, it's all very important to, uh, to us this year as we think about our, our data privacy. Um, so maybe you can share a little bit about, I, I mean, we know, again, Pine64, I can't stress enough, is all about, we've found, um, openness and uh, creating platforms that are hackable and that you can work with. So I'm really excited about this new product called Cube. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So Cube is, to our knowledge, one of the first, if not the first, completely open source IP cam. Um, we have already approached uh, developers who, um, you know, who, who deal with this area of Linux um, and spoken to them and listened to what it is that they would you know, like to see in such a camera, and we got a lot of feedback. And we uh, we actually had a prototype at Fostum last year, so this is you know long in the making. Um, mm -hmm. This is this isn't new stuff. I mean, we 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 talked to developers for a year to see what it is that they'd like to see in one of those cameras, and I think we we nailed it in a sense. Um, I think that, uh, you know, a, we, we're using an SOC which is very low powered, but it is pretty much completely mainlined. So already. So even, you know, oh, yeah. so there isn't much on our end that we need to do. Sung C does incredible work on these all winner processors. And, so so uh, again, does this fall into, hey, it's going to be easier to port our software to? It will be easier for developers to port their software to it. To be Fantastic. Specific. Yeah. So it will be, uh, you know, the Linux is in very good shape on it. Uh, I understand that there are certain questions of implementing the actual um, sensor at this time. You know, we don't have an ETA for when the cube is going to be available, but it will be available this year. And we're looking at, you know, um, 
having it uh, function in both indoors and outdoors. Um, Wonderful. That, that's, yeah. uh, that brings me to one of the things that's really exciting for me about um, the hackability of the Cube um, camera is uh, the GPIO. And, and could you share with us the, uh, you know, the, the, this camera? So the, think about this. Inside the camera, there's a full GPIO. Can you tell us what that can be used for, Wukash? Plenty of things. Uh, but one of the things is that we are thinking about a motorized case for for um for the cube which would allow users to you know um to interact with the camera and basically you know have ha have the camera move in um four axes and uh, you know um you could have uh, all sorts of robotic applications i know that people also have uh, you know thought about people who fly drones and stuff like that are really excited about this. I, I find it like what a brilliant idea. So rather than having to buy a different camera to have pan and tilt features, I have yeah. the same camera and I just add the GPIO component for pan, pan and tilt. Uh, and then the software is hackable. So if I want to add digital zoom, uh, which brings me also, um, so specifications wise, do you know the resolution of the camera at this point? From the top of my head, I believe it's eight megapixels. Okay, but so, please don't quote me on this because this is I'm doing this from memory, but okay. I am pretty sure that it is eight megapixel um, Sony sensor. Fantastic. Um, I'm looking to see if I have the specifications. I do not. Will it shoot 1080p video? Are you yes, aware? Yes, I'm sure that it will shoot 1080p yeah. video. At eight megapixels, yeah, we'd be able to take some really high quality stills and and do 1080p video, uh, which would be fantastic. So again, not quoting on that. I do see it's the uh, IMX179. So those of you who would like to look it up, and all of the specifications uh, are going to be listed in the uh, the description below. So if you're interested in the Pinebook Pro, the Cube, I've got those specifications listed there for you. So check those out. Um, Beyond that, I mean, you guys are working on uh, things like a retro gaming case. Anything else exciting from Pine64? I mean, this is huge. You guys are, are making some amazing waves in, uh, in what SOC is going to mean. And I think knowing that we're going to be able to get a Pinebook Pro, which is going to be um, on par with uh, like a, a good medium uh, or a high-end Chromebook at that price point, is just that's mind-boggling. I'm happy to hear that you're excited. Yeah, yeah I sure mean, am. we we've got a few things in store. You know, we're also making um, the Pine Tab, yeah, which is a, a tablet which is going to have a uh, magnetically um, attachable keyboard that's going <laughs> to double up as a as a cover. That's based on the A64. Um, okay. Uh, we're uh, updating um, the much beloved Rock 64. And uh, we're taking another stab at uh, the Pine H64, which we introduced last year. It didn't really, you know, we listen to the community. And uh, when the community comes back to us and says, you know, this really isn't up to scratch, you know, th this isn't what we hoped and expected, you know, we go back and we really do, you know, take it on board. So, you know, we're taking another um, stab at you know uh, the H6 SOC from All Winner mm -hmm. um, this year, and uh, in a smaller form factor with integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You know, for all of those who who really hope to see a Pine 64 board with uh, you know a module already uh, soldered onto the board. Wonderful. Well, I mean, to you, to the team, uh, keep up the great work. We're really excited to, uh, to you know, get to... We, we've had so much fun playing with Pine64 boards over the past several That's months. They've just been, you know, uh, one of those product lines that, honestly, I can say, has been impressing us. And, and you are just showing us today um, that that is going to continue in 2019. And so keep up the great work. Thank you, Robbie. Mukesh, okay. thank you so much for joining us, and thank you again for choosing Category 5 TV um, to unveil this information. Take care, man. Thanks. Bye-bye, everyone.